Hi, I'm Jane Esselstyn. I'm Anne Esselstyn, peeling garlic. And I am so excited to show you guys, we're doing a, a recipe today that is of my mom's making, and it's in Be a Plant-Based Woman Warrior, Live Fierce, Stay Bald, Eat Delicious. <laughs> okay, this is on, this is called Mommy's Mushroom Gravy 3.0. It's on page 87 of our, this uh, cookbook, and we love our spiral bound. Um, the spiral bounds make all, all the difference. So Every we, cookbook should be spiral bound. I'm gonna throw the onions in the pan over here. Wade, follow me. Um, I'm gonna throw these in here. This is a pan my mom gave me for my birthday. It's called the caraway pan. Yeah. And um, I'm just gonna put in these onions. There's no oil, no nothing. It's just heat and, and the onions. And we're gonna keep an eye on it while we talk for a minute up front. Okay, I'm gonna leave those there, but we're gonna keep checking on them. Keep stepping back there to check on those. So what I want to say is, the reason this is 3.0 is that the more we do this mushroom gravy recipe, the, the better it is, the more we tweak it. So we made a few tweaks in the Woman Warrior book, and I want to read some of them so I don't forget any of them. We love this so much, it's changed in small nuanced ways over the years, and we continue to refine it um, in our, our cookbooks are published. This recipe uses more onion, more mushrooms and none of the alcohol. She, my mom likes to add the alcohol. I like that she loves flavor. I don't drink any alcohol, but I love the flavor. And we don't add it because for some, some people, it's a trigger. For some people, they just don't want to. And for, I mean, honestly, for women, it's protective to not do it. Um, um, the flour is all also optional. And we use an oat flour in this recipe. Uh, just to stay away from gluten because some of our friends don't like to have gluten in their diet and it makes it just a really user-friendly uh, recipe and the 2.0 version of this had a decreased amount of sodium or miso and tamari so it just keeps getting better and better even though we're changing it in nuanced ways let's go look at the onion thanks for opening everything mommy can you chop up and can you chop up the three cloves of garlic on the wherever here let's put this is easy to carry it over oh it'd be great thank you Wade. <laughs> Takes a village here. We have Wade helping us out. <laughs> so if this is just browning nicely, I'm going to turn it down a wee bit. Um, and this pan is lovely. Nothing sticks to it, but it's get, you can see the caramelization happening. If I add a little bit of water, I'm going to add a little drop of water on there. Wade, will you follow? It's just going to it's going to steam up, but it's going to lift some of that little caramelization off. Um, see how it it cleans the pan. And it get, puts all that sugar back around the onions. So cool. I'm not going to do much more because I kind of like the browning. Can you have one more run through with that? My mom likes to cube the garlic. Jane, you're never satisfied with my garlic. Oh, <laughs> Cut it. I like it minced. And sometimes it comes out cubed. That is minced. Okay. So we're going to throw the... We're, so what we're going to do is we have the onion in the pan. Jane, it's um, impossible to cube garlic. You're doing a great job. All right. We're ready. It's right. It's ready. It's ready. We're ready. Throw it in there. Perfect. Um, and then we're going to add the mushrooms. So I want the garlic in before the mushrooms go. There you go. Can we go, Wade? Can you so can Wade see you? Can you angle the other way? There we go. And there you go. All that beautifully minced garlic. Thank Woo! you. Really well done garlic. All right, let's get that all stirred in. And we add the garlic after the onion because the onion adds a lot of like protection. It has more water in it. The garlic would just sort of burn in the pan. So this is how we do that. And then we add in our about 16 ounces of mushrooms because we add more in this one. These are already pre-sliced, which is such a bonus to have that done. And these are going to just shrink down. And I think we're going to add in the... Um, broth is pretty darn soon here. So what we have here, um, onion, and it makes it be a little bit brown like we did. We add a little water, add the garlic and the mushrooms, and continue cooking until the mushrooms soften a little bit, um, and they add water to the whole mixture. And after we do that, we're going to start to add other things, like we have the broth and the miso and the tamari and the flour. But while Jane, we, what? we should have gotten the plant-strong mushroom broth. We keep getting the vegetable one. Well, I, I have them all at home. And she lives next door. So 
we should do that. Why don't why didn't we think of that? I, but you know what? What we're going to do is what's really helpful. There is no other anything on the market that has zero sodium and such perfect and wonderful ingredients as this plant strong through four kinds of broths. Can you name all four? Yes. Um, vegetable, corn, mushroom, and sofrito. Nice, Mommy. Well nice. done. Okay. I, I turned it up a little bit again because the mushrooms are going to start to add their water. Uh, I find that sometimes if the mushrooms are not doing their thing, I put a little lid on it for a second, and it makes the heat stay within, and it, they start to go. Um, so I'm going to check that in a second, but it sounds like it's fine. What we're going to do here is the cool move is um, we have one cup of broth we're going to use, and so we're going to pour that into this bowl. That's about half a cup. And we're going to add to that one cup of broth to the pan, stir in a small bowl, place the remaining cup of broth with miso and tamari. So the miso, we're going to add in here and we're going to stir it up because miso is so flavorful. You don't want it to be, you know, have like a chunk of it going around um, without it being stirred up. You want to like get it all incorporated here. So how much miso? We're going to do two teaspoons of white miso, which is two thirds of this thing. So I'm going to go about two thirds of that. Jane, and I think this needs just a few drops of uh, liquid. Okay, perfect. There we go. Um, so I, top shot here, if you're around Wade, um, I'm just going to smash up this miso in this broth. And you see how it's sort of dissolving? So we want to do that with stirring it up because otherwise you get this bite that has this much miso and you go, whoa, that's some salty gravy or some flavorful gravy. So you really want to kind of get that stirred in. Um, okay, and then also in here we can put the tamari. And can you add in here two tablespoons of tamari? Uh -huh. Here's a tablespoon. One, two. So gravy looks so yummy and you think it takes so long and it's so complicated. Oh, look at these chunks. But it is really pretty easy. We have our onion in there. We have our garlic in there. We have our mushrooms. How are they doing? Oh my gosh, wait, look how much lower they are. Did you get that? Okay, we're gonna add, uh, we're gonna add this um, beautiful, um, I wanna make sure I get the right amounts here. We have our miso, our tamari, and um, our broth together. And I want to add a little bit of oat flour. And because we're not using um, gluten flour, because some of our friends at Thanksgiving don't like the um, gluten in their, some of their stuff. So here we go. We're going to add about, this is oat flour. I make my own sometimes. Just grind up extra oats that we have in our Vitamix and it becomes just powder. And the reason we're doing this here, and why is it that we're doing, why are we doing it here? Because if you put it in hot, it clumps. It tends to clump, or make little bits of oatmeal. <laughs> and so this makes it not be as likely to happen. Reduce the risk. All right, so let's get this flavor in there. This is a lot of the flavor. Okay, wait, here we go. We're gonna pour in, and I hope I don't have a lot of clumps. Yeah. This is Get that in there, and I think we need to add a little more, a um, little more. We had one more cup of gravy. Let's get this hot again. One more cup of that gravy. One more cup of broth. And all that tamari and miso. It's gonna make the the. Mushrooms just be delicious. So we're gonna let it do its thing for a little bit. Um, we're gonna season it with some black pepper to taste when it comes off, and or actually we can do it right now. Let me get some black pepper in there. Fee fi fo fum, love this thing. Because black pepper is kind of I associate that with the gravy that you guys made growing up for us. There you go. Mmm. It smells like gravy. Do you smell that? Can you smell the gravy? Mm -hmm. 
fog up your camera. <laughs> All righty. So now I think we're just going to take a little break here while it cooks down, and we'll see you guys in a few minutes. We'll tell you how many minutes it is. Right now, it's 12, 16. We'll see you in however many minutes it is when it looks like it's more gravy to us. This is looking good. This is looking good. It's getting, you can see how it's getting darker and thicker through all that, see all that, all this steam is just water coming off. Getting darker, thicker. Okay, we're gonna do a few more exercises. We'll be right back. Ooh wee, this looks beautiful. Okay, we're gonna bring it up front. Oh, here we go. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Nothing in the world. Oh. That's delish. And it's it's so, and I know we're it gonna smells, taste it. It smells like the holidays to me. We're gonna taste it. Now, but we're, we're, I have to try a little taste right now. I can't really eat great hot gravy out of the pan. Um, Mommy's Mushroom Gravy Master and can. So what we're doing, we're actually doing another recipe right after this. Mm. We're making, we're having actually a biscuit contest. So we're going to come Ooh. back and taste our warm biscuits in the gravy. I cannot taste a cool biscuit in gravy. I need to have it be a warm one. So we had to make this first. We'll be right back with a biscuit tasting contest in a second. We're going to close up two videos at the same time. So you're going to see the same closure on two videos if you're watching. These are our biscuits, and we're going to try our gravy, which we made earlier. Anne's, well, no, sorry, not Anne's, Mommy's Mushroom Gravy 3.0, and we're going to try it on. Brian, are you hearing? I, am hearing. I want you to try one of my biscuits with gravy. We're doing the gravy closure now. This is, this is 3.0. Mm -hmm. Brian! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just a surprise. I'll try one. Sure. I like bread of any sort. I mean, I know. It's like bread. It's like good bread. This is so oh, good. Great. It's okay. Okay. I the gravy's some, amazing. I need some jelly, though. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, I just, I'm, Ann, will you try some with your gravy? I'm trying mine with gravy, and it is a delight. A warm biscuit with mommy's mushroom gravy, because it's a very, the biscuits are so plain. Jane, I have to be honest. Mine are so good. I don't want to ruin them with even gravy when the gravy's so good, because. Let's take a bite. One bite. All right, one bite. And then give it a go. The sort of umami salty balance of the mushroomy gravy is awesome with the plain vehicle of the biscuit. The gravy is awesome, but the biscuits are better plain. Okay, so I don't know how we're going to close this up with our video, so sorry if it's confusing, but the biscuits are hot and warm and delicious with jelly, sweet, or with salty, savory, mommy's mushroom gravy. And if you are liking me, like me. Liking you like you? What? And you want things to be fast. No. There's nothing faster than Anne's short biscuits. And or better. If you want something that looks sort of like a biscuit. <laughs> it just doesn't look too <laughs> um, Brian, can I hear a cheer for this one? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you're always going to yeah. want a little fluff to your biscuits. He always wants a little fluff to his biscuits. All right. So, you see, I knew Brian was going to not like mine. No, yeah. That's all right. No, he we, no, we love no, it. No, I get it, Brian. I get it. Okay. So, hooray for biscuits, short, short flax biscuits or tall flax biscuits with gravy or with jelly. Closure for both these videos. Good luck editing this, Wade. All right. Cheers. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jane Esselstyn. I'm Ann Esselstyn. And it is almost Thanksgiving. And mashed potato day. Woohoo! Yes, and we, my mom is the master of mashed potatoes. Um, oh my gosh, I don't have the right page yet. Um, but she is going to take it away. So, I've got about six Yukon Gold are the best mashed potatoes because the skin is thin. Pardon so me, I found the page. If you're with us, it's on page 138 in the Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease Cookbook. Does that say mashed potatoes? Oh, yeah. It says good garlicky mashed right. potatoes. Good. And I am going to cut these potatoes in small pieces. And the reason is that it, Jane, would you help, please? Yeah. Because it, it gets it to, to cook faster. And the coolest thing about cooking boiling mashed potatoes is that you, I spilled, oh. I dropped one, is 
you've got to start them in, the, in not in boiling water because if you start them in boiling water, they cook from the outside. The, the outside gets cooked first, so they're not all the way through evenly. So start them in. So the outside gets a little fuzzy. I've yeah. done that. I've done that. So the outside's kind of fuzzy and yeah. inside's firm. And so the smaller pieces, the quicker they'll cook. And I would say it takes, oh, maybe 20 minutes. I keep tasting the potatoes as I go along to see. I mean, they just have to be soft enough so that when you So our recipe says that it mash starts, them, you start mash. with six medium mashed potatoes, but we probably end with five and a third potatoes with our recipe because she tastes so many from the pot as they're yeah. cooking. Well, yes. so yeah. I am going to put all these potatoes into the pot and there's water in here and I want to have them covered so that they all get cooked but you don't need tons. We got probably more water in here than I'm going to dump a little water out. All right. And here they go on the stove maybe somewhere between 17 and 20 minutes, but taste them at 15 to see what's happening. Yours may Do you be cut cover? smaller. Cover them, yeah. And while we're waiting for them to boil, what will we do, Jane? Well, I think we should do some pull-ups, some push-ups, or some jumping jacks. Oh, we'll do, Just we'll against do some push-ups the, push against the counter. this nice pasta pot so I can just Ooh. over here where you can't see I'm draining them and then I am going to put them into my big bowl. Jane has a nice glass bowl. There they go and then comes the fun but this is the problem Jane. Yes. I like to get leverage so when I mash from here oh. I don't get the nice leverage I like, so it's really good. Thank you. The purple stool. Go and go. And now you see I can really mash these potatoes nicely. <laughs> and All right, while she's mashing her potatoes. Jane, while you're mashing, would you get a couple of cloves of garlic? And oh. I have a garlic press. Oh. When I put them in, I like to have it them in the How press. How many cloves do you like? One or two, depending on your taste. And if you put it in hot, it kind of is nice. Yeah, it cooks now, all in. It's, oh. I am going to add some almond milk. This is the 365 unsweetened almond. Or you can use the Pacific. Or uh, soy milk would be great. Oh, there's a new kind of... of oh, is it almond milk? It's the almond, milk. it's called Oatly. And it's only the white container. But that, again, I, f I think oats have are a little sweet, so I think oat milk is not always the best choice Yeah, I think it, takes, it makes it taste a little bit vanilla -y. It tastes a little sweet. All right, I put so, two in and they were regular size. Do you want more or are you good? Two is good. Say those are for something else. Okay. Um, all right, this looking pretty nice, but now, now comes... Stand up, you look... How, what? Wait. Well, I don't... I, I'm afraid I'm too tall when I'm on the top of the stool. But now yeah. comes the, the, the trick. And that is, per potato, I'm going to put in one tablespoon of nutritional yeast. So I have six potatoes here. Ish, so I am going to put... she tasted a lot of them. No, I only tasted one. And now I've lost how many? <laughs> but I think that's six. If it's too much, it's, not, it's fine. Now, the thing about nutritional yeast is that it kind of makes the potatoes dry. Jane, we need pepper. Black pepper. Black pepper. Three, five, ho, oh, five. And again, pepper is a little I love individual. My pepper but um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna add more. Yeah, they're black peppers. At one point I put in multicolored peppers in here. The like pink and white and stuff. But these are these are black. We've ground through all And that. you know if you feel that you've gotten your potatoes too wet You'll be surprised. They, 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 they sort of stiffen up. So you can, and if they do stiffen up, just add any, any liquid, anything. Sometimes, if I don't have an alternative milk, 
I just use the potato water. Jane's always how, a little hard. How much do you want? How much do you want? And the potato just, water just for some reason. I put in a half a teaspoon or so that's gonna be about I don't know, we'll think four or five grinds. Okay. And there, also in the recipe we have a, a one teaspoon of dried rosemary. So I'm gonna find that. Oh, another a really important trick. Don't try and make your mashed potatoes in a blender because they it turns to oh. glue. So you really Crazy. need to, to do this. And if you don't have a masher like I do, you could use a fork. I mean, you could use your hands. Um, I've never Some tried my a, hands. No, the ricer? Some people have the... Oh, yeah, yeah. The people love the potato ricers. I've tried it. But I just like the simplicity of this. All right, one teaspoon of crushed rosemary. And, and I like your crushed rosemary. Then you don't get the big twigs in your... In your teeth. So here we are with our mashed potatoes, and oh, there is nothing as good as these mashed potatoes with our mushroom gravy. And we did do a... Yeah, I think we have a video on that. Um, we'll uh, maybe post a link to that um, so you can pair them up because tasting these alone sometimes, I'm like, oh, these are a little... Uh, and Mom says, Jane, stop. We always have this with... And cranberry. Our mushroom gravy and our cranberry, which was our previous video, I believe. And um, this is really just the centerpiece of our Thanksgiving along with our stuffing. So there are 42 Ryan. of us for Thanksgiving. And we're making mashed potatoes and mushroom gravy. And I'm sort of tempted. I think maybe would these last till Thanksgiving? I could sort of maybe... <laughs> Put add these to because we're going to need an awful lot. We're going to need a lot. We're going to eat them all. Of mashed right. potatoes. Yeah, here. Mm. Okay. Well, hope you would have. Oh, I just put a big pepper thing there. Is that right? Mm. <laughs> well, ho I hope you have wonderful mashed I potatoes. I love mashed potatoes at your Thanksgiving table oh, as well. I forgot, Jane. One thing. Oh. It's absolutely so much fun. If you have any leftover mashed potatoes, add some some um, flaxseed meal. And mix it up and make oh. them into little potato pancakes. Yes. Put them yes. in a nonstick pan. That is probably helpful. And then don't turn them over until they've been a long time cooking because they'll sort of coagulate. But they're beautiful. And you can eat them with salsa or just plain. But that's really fun. In fact, that's almost worth it to make a whole thing of mashed potatoes. To Coagulate is not really a delicious word to use about food, but oh. it, yeah, they do. They they get they get so nice and um, perfect with perfect pancake like. Have a great Thanksgiving. Fill it with mashed potatoes. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jane Esselstyn. I'm Ann Esselstyn. And as it's getting close to the time of Thanksgiving and families getting together and having to stuff themselves with stuffing, today we're going to make stuffing. Thanksgiving stuffing. The name of ours is Brian Stuffing, because my husband Brian is clearly like the best cook in the family. And let me tell you that this is such good stuffing, and I love it so much that my Christmas present every year from Brian is stuffing. A tray of stuffing wrapped in a bow. And we have it Christmas uh, lunch or, or dinner usually. It's just delightful. If you're following along, we're on page 136, and what's so exciting is that we stuff a pumpkin with stuffing, so the essence of the pumpkin can get drizzled or get baked or cooked and, and, into and it. And what it does is that when you put it when you put it out at Thanksgiving, it just makes it, it looks, so important. I mean, it's much better than a turkey. Get a big if you have a big oven, get a big pumpkin. Just save it after Halloween and carve it open, stuff it. All the extra stuffing we're going to put in a tray. So we're going to start. We start with onions. We're going to throw those in there. And you're going to cook them down. And onions are, get cooked in with a bunch of celery, which we know tastes so good, um, and all the stuffing. And we also, of course, put kale in our stuffing. And I make sure I'm going to put these all in the right order that we have here. And then we put in carrots. All the things take a little longer to cook. Actually, you could put in kale probably a little. You could put in kale later. Yeah. Um, kale will cook down, no problem. And then a ton of mushrooms. We love the mushrooms. Oh! Look at that. This is a load. Lovely. 
Um, so this is going to cook down for a while, and once all of the vegetables that are cooked down get warmed up, um, we're going to move on to mixing it here in this bowl. And in this bowl right here, what I have is about 15 pieces of bread that we have chopped up and toasted. So it, look, at, they're all just crispy and dry, like a stuffing. And oh, <laughs> so some of the breads I've used are the whole rye bread that is available all over the place at the Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, Heinen's. Heinen's is near us. Um, I used a bunch of this, which is which is uh, food for life. Genesis 129 sprouted grain and seed bread. And there's another rye bread in here from it has poppy seeds on it. From where's that? Where's the black bread from? Whole Foods. Oh, she gets it's, it at Whole Foods. It's called Black Russian Rye. Russian Bla Rye. I mean, yeah. It's a black bread covered in poppy seeds from Whole Foods. So that's what's in here. And once it's this black is Russian, that's what it's called. Black Russian. Okay. Once this is cooked down in a few minutes, we'll come right back and show how we mix it all together and then stuff things. Okay. Be right back. It's ready to mix everything up now. It's Look at that. It kind of went down in about half, would yeah, you say? Yeah, it, it shrinks down so much because there's so much water in it. And also because there's so much water in it, it doesn't stick to the bottom. You see, the bottom of the pan is clean. It's not, everyone thinks they have to spray and oil their pans. You don't. OK, so now we're going to combine the cooked vegetables with the, um, with the dried bread. Did you tell them how much you did to dry the bread? Oh, I just put it in the oven and let it uh, its dry, you know, until your bread has different kinds of moisture content. So until your bread is crispy, everyone knows what crisp bread's like. Uh, and then I put it in a bag overnight and so I'd have it ready for today. Okay, so we're going to stir this in with the spices. And the spices I have, we have here are, of course, sage, which is such the, the, the quintessential sort of... Um, smell and spice of stuffing. And we have some oregano, garlic powder, some rosemary. We're going to add in water chestnuts. And we're going to add Ready in. Ready for them? Sure. And we're going to add in Whole cranberries. Container. Yes. And we're also. Look at these gorgeous cranberries. Oh. They do look beautiful. They're just so beautiful. We have saved a few on the side for the top for garnish at the end. No, no, let's save them for the, at the end when we're going to garnish um, before serving. And <laughs> There's, in the recipe, we use two apples and a pear. But believe it or not, the pears right now are like stones. I thought they were quinces. They were so hard um, when I felt them. And if anybody knows what a quince is, what is a quince a fruit? It's, a, it's an odd, sounds very like old British. So apples go in. And if you have a pear, put that in there. We don't, so we're just skipping it. And now you have this great mixture of the crispy bread and the moist vegetables. And we add broth to make it all be just mushy, mushy, mushy. Yours is open, I think. I'm going to pour yours in. Oh, and some black pepper. I love the high drama of the big black pepper grinder. No idea how much I just put in there. Ha. All right, let's pour that in. It's about four to six cups, uh, depending on how, how, again, how moist the bread is and how much you need. You so put there's the whole four containers? Yeah, this is four, cup, four cups per container of this size. And um, this yeah. is engine two of vegetable broth. Yeah, 32 it's ounces. Got no That's... salt in it. It's hard to find that. Engine two or the salt? It's vegetable, veggie stocks without sodium. Added. Okay. Some vegetables have sodium in. Like celery has a lot. A lot of so you look at a no no salt added broth, and it will actually have sodium in the in the uh, nutritional information. But that's just from the vegetables. Okay, so we're gonna keep stirring this like mad. We usually my mouth is already watering thinking about this stuffing. Thinking about Thanksgiving and Christmas when Ryan would bring one to you. 
Um, all right, so sometimes to this beautiful recipe, people add, you want to toss that around for a minute? Yeah. Um, people add a little tawny port. And I don't even know what accent to use with that. We did a tawny port, I suppose. It's British or Scottish, it's a tawny port. Any of the alcohol cooks right off, but it leaves such a delicious flavor. So we're going to put in half a cup of tawny port, and we're going to call this a half cup. Is that right, half cup, you think? I don't know. It smells like tawny port. All right, we're going to call that a half cup. Okay, do we need a little more? A little more? Guess what? It's going to make me sneeze. Sneeze, me too. The pepper, <laughs> the pepper. I have an itchy nose too. I was going to step away. <laughs> I was just going to sneeze right into the Oh, mom. <laughs> <laughs> they say those, those, of, those of us who were born um, and run around barefoot and had lots of family members sneezing on us, we have a stronger immune system. <laughs> Maybe that's why I have a strong immune system. She sneezes on all of our food. No, I don't. Uh, really? Are you going to put more? I'll leave it just because I think it needs to be a little squishier. We can ask Brian. He's the pro. He's here today. Sorry. Brian, will you assess how moist this is? Is this how much, how moist you like it when you make it? Yeah, it's always going to dry out. So. Always going to dry out. So is that so look if like you it's get, good if enough? It gets... I mean, it says four to six cups, so we're going to use the, you're the pro. What do you think? You want it to be kind of mushy. This is, right, so this, I is go, gushy enough? I guess, according to Brian, I would go to the six cups. Okay, so we're going to go a little more to uh, about half of this? Dry no. Stop. Dry stuffing is awful. Stop. Okay. Okay, this is looking very nice and moist. So let's put some of that, let's fill our, let's fill our pumpkin. Whew. So cool. Here, I was gonna help you, but you're doing just fine. And you know what's so cute is when you put the pumpkin in the oven to cook, you put a little cap, you put it like a little tin man cap of, of, of tin foil on top of this so it doesn't burn. So it has a little tin cap. Okay, look at that. There we go. And I'm going to put a little tin foil nose on top of that one. There you go. All right, spread that around. That gets this. That'll go on there. And then little we look at that. Protector. It's like a little bit of sunscreen on top of that. Okay, let's load it in the oven now. This is going to go in the oven so it's going to be able to fit right in. I'm going to go on the side over here with this one so it'll bake. And hopefully this one also fits in. And that can win. Perfect. There we go. Can bake all day at, oh, what's it bake at? Oh, we should know. 350, 350. and it's going to go for 45 minutes or an hour until it dries out, um, or just not dries out, until it gets that uh, nice, moist. Mm, um, that's Brian's stuffing. Yeah, it's just, it's like bread pudding -y, or I don't even know what bread pudding is. No. All right, we'll be back it's in a like minute. stuffing. We'll be back in, in, in an hour, actually. Okay. Bye. No, not bye. Oh. Tem temporary goodbye. The, the um, stuffing the is almost stuffing. done. And oh, the pumpkin. Yes. Okay. Oh, it looks beautiful. Look you, at the little pumpkin cap. It's the cutest thing. It's the cutest thing. Oh. Look at that. Is it, is it too hot? You know, I think we should have probably put that pumpkin in a dish because it made a little mess on the bottom. Oh, but you know what? Look at how adorable this is. And it didn't get sunburned on top. Ooh, look at that. It's adorable. Everyone's going to want to come up to this dish and say, oh, give me some of that. Look at that. Oh, yum. And then this. What's, how does this look? Ooh. Oh, wow. Thanksgiving stuffing. Oh. All right. This and is with mushroom gravy on it. And my mashed potatoes on the side. We have to do mashed potatoes soon. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, this is going to be, this is going to be dinner tonight. Lunch tomorrow. Dinner <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> All right. 
Have a good Thanksgiving, and we hope you guys have plant strong stuffing on your table. Plant-based stuffing. Plant perfect stuffing. Whatever you want to call it. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.